Hey there, welcome to Build XYZ. On today's video, we're gonna be rebuilding some speakers that I found in an alley eight years ago. I'm gonna be doing this using only scrap material. So let's get into it. This project starts by removing all of the speaker components from the old speaker cabinets. Once this was done, I measured up the internal dimensions as I do not want to change the sound characteristics of the new enclosures. I drafted up a simple model using Fusion 360 and scribbled down a cut list. Then I head over to the scrap pile to grab some 3 quarter inch material. Let's check out what we have that's usable for this project and avoid any unnecessary trips to the hardware store. I found some 3 quarter inch MDF, some laminate left over from a jig, and some 3 quarter inch walnut veneered MDF. I found butt joints to be adequate in strength here and I wanted these things to be dead simple. I headed over to the table saw and I cut everything using the fence and a cross cut sled. Here, I'm cutting down the MDF to create the back, sides, top, and bottom. I just cut off the stain bit at the end as there's plenty of material here to work with. We want to center this kind of nice grain right in the center of our workpiece. In order to safely cut laminate, ensure that the laminate does not slide underneath the fence. I like to clamp an additional scrap piece of melamine to the original table saw fence, and this new scrap piece sits tightly against the table saw surface and eliminates any gaps. With some safety glasses on, I cut off eight pieces for the top, sides, and bottoms. Instead of measuring and transferring over markings, I kind of cheated and just used the old speaker cabinets and traced out the openings. And the old speaker cabinets are officially of no use to us anymore. Now it's time to cut the holes for the speaker plates and speakers. I first used a drill press to cut a starter hole that would accommodate a jigsaw blade. Then I finished all the cuts using the jigsaw. The boxes are assembled using very simple butt joints and wood glue. An 18 gauge brad nail was used to hold the boxes while the glue dried. These will be covered with laminate later on. Let's now cut out the holes in the walnut front to accommodate the speakers. I gave all the corners a quick sanding before gluing on the front panels. The front panels were then glued and the speakers placed in bar clamps and clamped against each other while the glue cured. All the sides of the boxes were sanded down with 120 grit sandpaper to ensure a smooth surface for the laminate. The walnut fronts were then sanded down with 220 grit sandpaper, making sure that I did not sand through the veneer. The fronts were then sprayed with one part semi-gloss polyurethane and one part lacquer thinner. A very light 220 grit sand and then one final coat of polyurethane. Now onto that nasty smelling contact cement. I masked off the walnut and applied the contact cement using a foam roller. Any areas that inadvertently get contact cement on, you can clean with mineral spirits or paint thinner. In about 15 minutes, the contact cement should set up and it shouldn't be tacky anymore. At that point, you can adhere the two surfaces together. I'm using a laminate roller to apply pressure, but it's not absolutely required. You can just use your hand pressure. After each side is laminated, I use a flush trim router bit to trim off the excess material. Then I continued laminating and trimming the remaining sides. A very gentle bevel was applied using the router table to clean up the edges.
Now in hindsight, I probably should have left the finishing of the walnut to the very end, as I found the contact cement ate away at the polyurethane slightly. So I gave it a quick sand and one more coat of polyurethane here. Beveling the table saw and using a hardwood scrap, I whipped up a quick French cleat in the event that these speakers are mounted on a wall. Then I affixed the cleat to the speaker box using 3 quarter inch brad nails. I used the table saw to cut a very small relief for the speaker wires when using the cleats to mount these speakers. Now some of the inductors were just dangling in the box, so I used some 5 minute epoxy to quickly set those back in place. Then I mounted all the speaker components back inside the box. The remaining steps are the same as disassembly, but in reverse with the exception of some 3D printed grills that I designed, which can be used more generically on any four inch woofer or one inch tweeter or scaled to any size. Links to the STL files used for these grills can be found in the comments below. And that concludes this project. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time.